Hi everyone, this is the fourth and last video of this Blazor server cookie authentication. Okay, in this video, we are going to implement user logout logic. Okay, so in our project, now let's add a logout functionality. Okay, so logout, we don't have any UI and we, have, we only have .NET code. So instead of creating two files like logout.chhtml and logout.chhtml.cs, I am going to create only view file. In that view file only using Razor syntax, I can able to write the .NET code as well, okay, to make our logic simple. So let's add a view file like logout.chhtml. Okay, first thing, let's define the route for this logout. And now let's import few important authentication namespaces like Okay, import namespaces like authentication and authentication cookie from the Microsoft library. Okay, now let's inject the HTTP context into our view. Now to write our C sharp code, we can use a rel syntax like functions. Okay, inside of it, we can write our uh, lifecycle methods like on get async, on post async of Razor pages. We can implement directly in the Razor by using the at the right functions. So since the logout is always recommended to post, right? So we are going to write a method for on post testing. Okay, let's define the lifecycle method of the Razor page. So this is our method. Now what I can do using HTTP context, HTTP context dot sign out. Okay, default method we can use to sign out. And we, here we have to define the type of authentication sign out. Our is cookie authentication, right? Cookie authentication default start authentication scheme. Okay, that's it. It will remove the authentication cookie. After successful logout, we have to redirect our application into the home page. Okay, so that's the logic. Uh, we have to implement for the logout. Now let's add the anchor tag for logout button. Okay. Go to login display component. Okay. Under the user authenticated name, let's add our anchor tag for logout. Okay. So here what I will do, since it is a post request, right? logout is a post or logic inside is post. So I am going to use a form. So defined a form and its type is post and action we are defined our route. Okay. Now let's create a button, logout button inside of it. So that I'm clicking the button, our form get posted and we are going to log off from our from our, from our application. Okay. That's it. This is our uh, logout functionality. Let's run on test our logout functionality. So click on login and try to login with our credentials. So here you can see logout button. Let's click on logout. And here you can observe an error that is 400, which means bad request. Why it is getting bad request? If we go back and inspect element, here we are posting our form. Okay, so where form posting is our Razor page. So in MVC or Razor page, in, in any of the .NET application, form post will always 
expect the anti forgery token okay by default plaza server components won't generate anti forgery token because logout button is in blazor component right this is blazor component here we don't have a uh, anti forgery token generated by default okay so that is the reason our request is redirected as a, as a bad request so to overcome or to resolve this issue we have to generate the anti forgery token into our blazor components as well okay so let's try to implement it in the models in the auth let me create a new model like application initial state okay so this is my new model to this new model i am going to have only one property that is anti forgery token property okay Okay. Next thing is in Blazor we have a underscore host dot CS HTML file. So go to there. Okay. Now here we are going to generate the anti forgery token. Okay. To generate the anti anti forgery token, here we need to implement. Here we have to inject i anti forgery interface that is provided by the Microsoft library. Here I injected the anti forgery interface. And now in the layout, let me initialize my application initial state class. Okay. So for that, let's import the namespace first. Sorry, it is using. And let's initialize our application state app initial state folder new application initial state okay here anti forgery token we can generate the anti forgery token get and store token so for that we have to pass http contest instance and dot request token okay so why we are generating here local host.cshtml is a blazor file not a blazor component and it is the first file or a parent file so it, it will come from the server means we are generating the token when the request is at the server okay because blazor server is single page right only first request only will hit the server remaining all requests will be handled at the browser right that is the reason by default we won't have anti forgery token so in this case what we are doing we are explicitly generating the anti forgery token when our first request went to the server okay now it should be passed to the blazor components so for that here we have component right this is the entry component it will open app right so here what i can do i can pass the parameter param siphon and type of the property name so this type of property will be should be in app component as well okay i will name the property like initial state and pass our app initial state okay now create one more model okay so that is like token provider dot cs this class also contains single property that is anti forgery token And let's register this class at our scope level so that this class I'm going to inject wherever which our component or which our blazer component I want. So let's register this class in the program.cs file at a scope level. And scope 
and pass token provider okay and now okay come back to here in the host file we are passing to the app component right so open app component app dot riser component okay let's open code model and inside of the underscore imports uh, let's register the namespaces this namespace So that I can use the models very easily. Okay, come back to our app dot riser component. Okay, so in the host file we are passing initial state as a property, right? Copy that name, and it should be a public, and its type is application initial state, and name is this one. And it should be coming from the parent component, right? So here it should be a input parameter. Decorator should be given. Okay. Now let's open page lifecycle method like on initializing. And here let's inject our token provider instance. We have registered right scope level so we can inject it. And to this token provider equal to initial state dot anti forgery token. Now token provider contains the token provider dot anti forgery token as a into the Anti forgery token. Okay, now our uh, using the token provider instance, all our Blazor component can fetch the anti forgery token. Now go to our login display component, and here we will have small change like let's add a hidden input field. Okay. And its name should be, it is a fixed name. And here value should be our token provider dot anti forgery token. So let inject our token provider. And pass it to our here. Okay, now we are ready on form posting. We are sending the anti forgery token to our uh, post logout treasure page. Okay, and here the name should be this like this only because by default request verification token has a hidden field and it contains the anti anti forgery token. That is the default convention of the any .NET treasure or MVC application. So here the name is like double underscore request verification token okay make sure to give prefix with the double underscore okay this one not a single underscore this is a double underscore okay now save and test our application for logout functionality okay now here you can see our logout button let's inspect it and here you can see our anti forgery token is generated we know that anti forgery token is by default used by the razor pages or mvc application for the security purpose for any post request okay now if i click on logout now i have to successfully log out from my application see i am successfully logged out so that's all about the logout functionality in the blazor server cookie authentication and it is the end of the series i hope this video has provided some useful information to you all if you like my video, please support me by subscribing to my channel. Soon we are going to meet with new videos. Until then, signing off.